All right, everyone, time to get started. Welcome to the third and final workshop of Genesis Month. So a few announcements before I hand it over quickly to Manish, one of the directors for the MIT Bitcoin Expo this year. Um, this is our last session, so if you want to get news on upcoming events for either the Sloan Blockchain Club or the Bitcoin Club, please uh, scan those QR codes and join the club. And I think with that, I'll pass it over to Manish, who has a bit of a recruiting call for, for chairs. Hi, folks. Uh, thanks for being here. And to all of you that came to our first kickoff meeting for the Expo, thank you for being there. Uh, we are still looking for uh, folks to help with the Expo. None of the committee uh, chair uh, positions have been filled yet. So uh, it's all up for grabs. And if you're interested in helping with the event, please do so. It's going to be held in March. Uh, we don't have a finalized date yet, but it's going to be awesome. So uh, if you're interested in uh, helping uh, meeting a lot of people in the space, uh, helping raise funds for the event, or uh, you know, helping us logistically um, put it all together. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Sweet. Thanks, Manish. Steve, on to you. Oh, excellent. Let's do it. All right. Fantastic. I need the. How's everybody doing? Good? Fantastic. Well, I am doing fantastic, and I am excited to be here because I, in my bio, I have talked about teaching this class um, uh, a few times in a row, and um, I've always gone up to the edge of what we're going to go to tonight, but we're going to go over the edge tonight. So I hope you guys uh, are wearing seat belts and stuff because uh, it's going to be fun. So this is about me. I, I did this on the first class, but just in case there are new people, I've got my undergrad from here and, and MBA from Sloan. And uh, that's kind of been my life, is like translating technology into business terms and business terms into technology. So I have a lot of stories about technologists not understanding businesses and businesses not understanding technologies. Happy to chat with you guys about that afterwards. And right now I'm founder of hashchat.xyz Web3 Messaging. So after this class, or even right now, you can connect up to that and try out the, uh, try out the chatting app. Launch our, launch our app and test it out and let me know what you think. I think you know how to get in touch with me, so. Okay, real quick on a course review. Um, the first class we learned about wallets, and hopefully you guys all have a wallet. If you don't, go to metamask.io right now and get one and add it to your browser extension. Um, I think before the class we had a little preview set up so you could paste your wallet address into the WhatsApp so we can get you some rink beat ETH. Um, and uh, actually, then the second class, we did um, DAOs, so we created a company. And we were trying to work on XDAI, but I think, I think we decided to kick over to RinkB network, which is a test network. Um, you guys probably all heard about the merge. Did anyone not hear about the merge? Merge, 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 merge. I was very excited about the merge. This is the way I like to describe it to normal, my normal friends. It's like a $200 billion jetliner flying through the air and the community deciding, let's change the engines mid-flight. <laughs> and then they did it and everyone, including me, was up till three in the morning here like watching to see, is this gonna crash? Is this gonna crash? Is this gonna crash? And it, it worked and it was, it, was like, it was like better than expected. So it's like this thing is flying along and all of a sudden, hey, wait a minute, what changed, who changed the engines? Like it's, it's flying in a completely different plane now. And I guess you could also take that analogy to be like it was burning carbon-based fuel before and now it's burning clean fuel now, something like that. Anyways, okay, we'll stop there. Um, so we, uh, yeah, so last week we set up a, a digital organization and part of that was also creating a token now this was all sort of done in a user interface and we can, we'll do it again quickly tonight. So if you guys didn't get a chance to do that, I'll mention some points in time during the lecture that you can kind of jump on your laptop and, and make that happen. So, but tonight we're gonna launch a token and we're gonna trade a token. It's gonna be cool. It's a little bit, it's a little bit thrilling, a little bit exciting. I hope you guys are ready. Okay, so before we do that, I wanted to talk, I mentioned this in the first class, but I really want to hammer this home. The whole idea of technology innovation, which has been my career, is that there's, there's like a bunch of different categories of them. And if you're trying to take a technology and bring it to market, which is typically the opposite way that everybody tells you to do it. They're like, that's like a solution, you know, a hammer looking for a nail or a nail looking for a hammer, whatever those analogies are. Um, 
But if you take an incremental innovation, typically you can find a lot of people that are willing to, to take that up. And for blockchain, that's lower cost. So for, for blockchain, there's a, lot, there's a lot of increased cost, but for some applications, there's lower cost. And what you find is that enterprises are taking that on all day long. So that's what I'm suggesting is if you want to launch a new venture, you probably shouldn't just leverage the incremental benefits of a technology if you really want to make an impact in the marketplace. So there's also something called architectural innovation, or it's a different form of disruptive innovation, a specific type of technology innovation that completely disrupts the business models that are in place. If you think about the architecture of something like you're ripping apart something and completely starting over again. And that's effectively what blockchain is doing to the financial system. It's a complete architectural rewrite of the financial system. And it's like starting over again, right? There's, there's like on-ramps and off-ramps. They're not really compatible with each other. Um, so what the theory says about innovation and using innovation in the marketplace is that the advantage goes to the new entrant. In other words, entrenched big players are not going to automatically say, oh, hey, hey, there's this new technology that's going to completely destroy my business and I have to rip it out from the ground up and start over again. No, they're not going to do that, right? They're going to use all the incremental innovations they possibly can, and it's really up to the new entrants to kind of take advantage of those disruptive aspects. So of course, the disruptive aspect of blockchain that I love is the decentralization of system and authority aspect of, of blockchain. So um, some examples of that. One is, how can I confirm an asset transfer anywhere on the globe with zero trusted intermediaries? Before blockchain, could you do that? And I should put it here with like within 10 minutes. Like that would be, you could just, it was just not possible before there was blockchain, right? So this is a, a way that the, the disruptive aspects of blockchain are, are being deployed now. Uh, or basically any L1s does take care of that. Now, what if you wanted to trade something and you, want it, and you have to go to these gigantic centralized exchanges or di gigantic centralized brokerages, what did you, if you wanted to decentralize the brokerage themselves? Well, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, <laughs> so first, if you look at kind of a central um, marketplace, there's a high concentration of buyers and sellers. And it was long thought that having a large central marketplace is the best way to do it. You get super high liquidity, you get a ton of buyer action, everybody knows everybody else, all the transactions happen there, you get great price discovery, you get the best deals, and you just have market makers that kind of do all the transactions and figure out the buyers and sellers and operate on a little spread between the two, and they maintain the order books. So all of that activity has always been thought, this is a great way to do it in a very centralized way. But so how can you possibly decentralize that? Um, and so who, uh, the big questions are, who would provide the liquidity if you're trying to do just straight stock or token trans, uh, exchanges? And then who would, who would make the market for, for something that's decentralized? Right now, you have such a gigantic centralized exchanges that large banks are willing to take on the risk because you have large transactions that are happening and there's a lot of money to be made. But if you did it in a decentralized way, it's, the thought was almost like, well, you, you have so much small activity, who would care about doing that? Well, for some of you who've been around long enough, you know that Uniswap in November 2018, they're basically the OGs that kind of started the whole decentralized exchange concept. And now today, you know, you, you guys are all living in today, so you can fast forward to today and you know there's a bajillion of them out there. But at the time, it was really innovative and crazy and people thought, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. You know, like, <laughs> not really sure. It's an open source public good all smart contracts that operate the decentralized exchange are, are open source. They have to be so that people can read them so they know what they're interacting with. Um, but how does it solve the liquidity and market making? So let's talk about liquidity first. The first way they, they do it is by saying, you know, you don't really need to have a high concentration of, you don't need to have one bank that provides liquidity. You could actually break it up and everybody could provide a little bit of liquidity themselves and in aggregate it becomes a big number and that's what you really need. You need that final number to be a big number. You don't need to have one bank providing liquidity. So what, what they do is they say, let's take a trading pair like ETH DAI, and DAI is a stable coin in case you don't know. Um, anyone can provide a 50-50 equal split of that capital and then post it onto Uniswap to provide a trade service for those trading pairs. And we're going to get more into this in the, in the next few slides. So for example, today I would provide one ETH and 650 DAI, which is $650, right? That's roughly, well, I guess that's not quite right. <laughs> Maybe it's a half ETH and 650 DAI. How about that? Mistake. Okay, 
These are old slides. Um, and each trade then generates a liquidity provider fee of 0.3%. So if you're providing this aggregate of liquidity and each trade generates a small amount that gets paid back into the liquidity pool, that's very attractive, especially if you just want to park your capital somewhere and have it work for you. So it's actually operating and throwing off some capital. So that's, that's fine. And that, the question is, OK, you want, me to, you want me to take my capital and put it up on this 50-50 swap, you know, sounds great and I'm going to get 0.3% of all these trades. And if you think about, you know, the old days of like, well, the Wall Street, in Wall Street, the brokerage house always wins. I want to be the house. How can I be the house? And in the old days, it was like, well, okay, first you start with $100 million, then you spend 20 years, you know, trying to get the regulations working right, and then you can be the house, right? So that's just not available for anyone. So how can you sort of push this out to the edges and allow the rest of the world to kind of participate in this? And that's the first step in, in a, a Uniswap, is providing that liquidity service. So the next question is, how do you set prices? And Uniswap decided to use the simplest formula ever, which I'm so grateful for, because there's so many other ways of doing automatic market making, which is a constant product formula, which is just simply x times y equals k. And I love, I love addressing an MIT audience with a formula like x times y equals k. So if k is a constant product and x and y are variables, what shape is that curve? No math nerds in here? Okay, you're waving your hands, <laughs> but you got it right. <laughs> it's a hyperbola. So, um, but the, the, the real question is not so much what is the curve, but why does this make sense for an automatic market maker? And there's a thousand different, you know, better solutions out there or more complex solutions. But to get started um, with this, where X and Y, so the number of ETH that you put in, the number of DAI you put in, have to be equal in the beginning, and they have to main, or sorry, they, the, multi the multiplication of them have to be a constant number or an invariant, so a constant product formula. So how does this work in practice? So actually, let me just see here. So I've got, this is a picture, and then I've got a more detailed example afterwards. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on, if you guys are seeing this for the first time, does the picture help first, or does the example help better? But I haven't shown you the example yet. So let me, uh, and in the spirit of MIT, usually we're always trying to learn, so I'd love your feedback on this stuff. Okay, so here's Uniswap's AMM curve. So this is the hyperbola that you guys were, were showing, and this would be a curve of OMG, which is a token provider, and ETH. So they provided 50-50 um, in the beginning to set this curve and to set the K. So the K has been set here, and what you're seeing is a certain position where one buyer put in a certain amount of ETH, and that moved, moved the needle over here, but then the, um, the market maker needed to adjust the position of tokens for the OMG tokens and release a certain number of OMG tokens, OMG tokens in order to maintain that curve, maintain that constant. Okay, I'll, I'll do an example on the next slide, and then we'll come back to this graph, but keep this graph in mind when we do the next slide. Okay. So this is an example trade. This comes from Uniswap's white paper back in 2018. So don't blame me if you don't like the numbers. So you take 10 ETH and you take 500 OMG tokens if I'm the founder of OMG and I want to set up a liquidity position. I post 10 ETH and 500 OMGs. So 10 times 500 is 5,000. That's my invariant. So I have to maintain that 5,000 whenever the trades go back and forth. So if a buyer sends in one ETH and says, I want to get some OMG tokens out of this, then the ETH pool goes up by one, by one, so it goes up to 11, but I have to take the fee off of it. And then I have to recalculate what the actual right number of OMG tokens to hold in the pool should be. So I just simply balance it out. And then the end result is I, can, I need to send, I need to get rid of 45.35 OMG tokens in order to maintain that balance. And I'll send you all the slides afterwards. They'll be posted for you, so you can look at this in detail. Um, one thing to add is that the fee is added to the ETH pool, so it becomes back to 11 again. So this is, um, then the OMG pool is, is adjusted to be, well, it is right there when you, when you release the tokens. So that's a, a, a very simple example of how the liquidity pool is set up with 10 ETH tokens, 500 OMG tokens, and then a trade happens. 
The, the thing I want to be clear about this when we get to actually producing our own tokens and listing our own tokens is that one ETH out of a 10 ETH pool is a huge trade by normal standards. That's 10, well, 5% of the overall pool. And that is a tremendous amount to actually move the, move the needles. So the reason, so let me go back to the previous slide. So this is the old position. So this is the original starting point of the 10, 10 slash 500. And then one ETH was spent, and then 45 OMG tokens were given out in order to maintain that curve. The other thing to look at on a hyperbolic curve like this is it's very hard to drive it to any extreme. If you think about trying to, you know, trying to, to completely tank the tokens in one direction or another, you're going to have to end up spending basically an infinite amount of money in one direction or the other. It is, you know, you can sort of crash it and turn it to effectively zero because nobody wants to buy anything when there's so high a gas fees. But it's a very nice curve in terms of providing that kind of stability that you need in the, in the crypto markets. <clears throat> Provided the liquidity pool is big and the trade sizes are small. So the example I showed, 10% of the overall liquidity pool is a big trade. So that's going to move the, move the price substantially. So if you think about in aggregate, what do I want? I want this ratio of the tokens to always kind of fluctuate back and forth. And I want to just stay near this old position at all times. So that means I want to encourage buying and selling of my token. I want there to be constantly buying and selling of the token. So there's, so there's some amount of tokens that goes up on, on one side of the equation. And then some come, you know, the, there's other purchase and sells that happen on the other side. So you're always maintaining this nice part of the curve. Is this all making sense? Sort of? Is this too easy for you guys? <laughs> the thing I love about, about crypto is that it takes like this math, and we can get far deeper and do calculus and all kinds of nerdy stuff on this, but it takes this, this like cool math and then it like makes it practical where you can actually trade it and do stuff with it. And so so that, that's the uh, exciting, what I find exciting about crypto. Okay. So the other, um, the other subtle point to, to, to recognize here is when you put in a, an LP position and you enable trades to happen between two, two trading pairs or two tokens, um, the 0.3% fee that happens every time a trade happens is actually given back to the pool. And the overall pool actually goes up as a result of it. So what happens is when you put in your tokens into a, an LP position on Uniswap, you're actually minted some other tokens that are LP position tokens that you're given. And then the value of that token Actually, you can trade that token on its own, frankly. But it goes up as there's more and more trades that happen. Um, and the thing to point out here is you'll notice the new invariant down here, which is kind of a funny name because it's invariant is supposed to be not changing, but this is a new invariant. So the fees go on top of the invariant factor, and it should continue to grow then. And what that, what that does effectively is it makes this curve kind of move a little bit up, to the, up away from the excess here, up and to the right here. So effectively, with every trade, there's a teeny little movement of that curve up and away. So the invariant kind of grows a little bit. And that actually goes to grow your LP position as well, which is cool and good fun stuff. So OK, so have I convinced you to put in money for an LP position? And you know how it's all priced now? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, sir. Yeah, they get a pro rata portion of the overall pool. So when they decide to leave the pool, whatever their pro rata portion is, they can take out. That's why the pool kind of grows. Right. 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 And you're there, whatever fees are growing while you're there, you take advantage of. So. How do the bookkeeping on those positions work? It's like when you deposit new liquidity into the pool, how does it decide how much the LP token is going to make you? And I know it gets really This is Uniswap V1. Yeah, you're going to have to dive into the code. To, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, like people come enter and exit all the time, and it's hard to know which trades you get and which ones you don't get. Yeah. You have to buy in at the certain K point. So whenever you buy in and put, place your tokens, that's going to be the, the starting point. 
I, it, it, it's the current price of the liquidity position. So whatever it is, you're going to buy in at that point. Whatever the K is when you buy in, that you're going to buy into that point, and you're going to get the value of the tokens for that, and then it's going to grow or shrink depending on what happens. So, <laughs> okay. So, I have have I convinced you all yet? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's just talk about how successful Uniswap was. So Uniswap, and you mentioned Uniswap V3. I was giving you an example of Uniswap V1 from 2018 because it's like. It's like studying how a car works by looking at a Model T. You have to like study the basics first before you get super advanced on things. Um, today, they have $4 billion in total value locked. It's not a market cap metric. It's sort of how many people have LP positions in there. And $7 billion traded in the last 24 hours. Um, some of the largest pools are DAI USDC, right? two stable coins. You can see how that would be a really nice pair to sort of hold on to because you could put two stable coins in there and then just enjoy the feeds as, as they're traded back and forth. Okay. Um, you can do that. You, you can have two stables to pretty much gain interest till perpetuity in theory. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things, I, uh, the, the interesting thing about this entire sector is Anyone can connect to the LP pools. Anyone can put whatever they want in there, which is both fantastic and empowering and freaking scary, right? Because it's like, anyone can do this. Oh my God, anyone can do this. So be careful, okay? <laughs> Did I already mention my disclaimer that this is for educational purposes only? <laughs> yes, sir. So the BTC uh, Ethereum uh, bet, so uh, the BTC is like a, a, a synthetic BTC on the Ethereum network? Yeah, yeah, it would be a, yeah, good catch. It was actually WBTC, but I, I, I dropped the W, which is wrapped BTC, which is a form of Bitcoin that's on the Ethereum network, yeah. Good catch, good catch. But you can still trade it, and you can still provide liquidity for it on, on the Ethereum network. Okay, so if you have an open source project and you're successful and you got billions of dollars, of course that means forks. And I actually, I need to correct this because PancakeSwap and Uniswap are the two forks. Curve and Balancer are two advanced ones. But you can go to defilama.com slash DEXs and you can see all of the ones that have, that have create, been created over the years. Uniswap was the first one and they've gone on to kind of create new versions. And SushiSwap I think was, was one of the best sort of fast followers of Uniswap. And um, with Uniswap V3 they decided to change their license agreement so it's Open source, anyone can read the code so you know, you're not, you know what you're engaged in when you, when you interact with the code. Um, but it's not, you can't use it for commercial purposes until a year has gone by. So I was like, oh, that, that was clearly a really smart idea. So they get a, a year opportunity to kind of get started on V3 and kind of establish their position in the marketplace and then like, okay, then let, let's let the forks take over after that, so. Any questions on this so far? You guys ready to get your hands dirty yet? Or are you still, you have a question? Oh, yes, yes, yes. There, well, the <laughs> there have been all, so, so there's another phrase called a rug pull, which is when somebody provides a lot of liquidity and there's a huge amount of trading and then they just decide to exit the market completely. Um, and if you, if you look at that um, very simple AMM curve, when there's a lot of liquidity and the trades are small, everything is wonderful and stable. If you like all of a sudden suck a whole bunch of liquidity out because you feel like it, you can completely disrupt all kinds of markets and you can completely kind of, yeah. Well, that, that was a, the sushi versus Uniswap was a completely different um, uh, argument, but there's still, there's still a little bit of feud going on there. I'm sure somebody else knows a lot more about that than I do anyways. Yes, sir, did you have a question? I don't know. No? Okay. Okay. So, um, last week we created a company. Hopefully you guys all created a company, an ERC-20 token. Um, and I want you guys to provide liquidity for your token coming up in a few minutes here. Um, and the trading pair we're going to use is your token, whatever it was, XYZ and ETH, or Rink B ETH. Hopefully you guys all got the notice that um, we, need, we should move to Rink B ETH, and I sent you all... I think 1.2 rink B. Um, oh, that's right, I was gonna say that when we, were, we, got, we got sidetracked on the merge. I was so excited about the merge. So because of the merge, there's uh, I think five or six test nets and a couple of them are going to be taken offline on October 5th. One of them happens to be rink B and I happen to have a whole bunch of rink B ETH for whatever reason. 
So I sent you guys like 1.2 rink be ETH. Any of the ETH, any of the addresses that were in the WhatsApp group should have received a whole bunch of rink be ETH. So you should be able to recreate your company on the rink be uh, network. Yes, sir. Okay, I was wondering why I'm not on WhatsApp. Is there any other way to request that? What What are you on? Um, have a Telegram, email. Okay. Sure. Okay. We'll, we'll have a pause here in a minute, and I can I can get you some stuff. And anybody else, if you're on WhatsApp, please post your, your wallet address there and I can send you some ETH. Okay, so if everybody is, is on Aragon or has the token that they created from that particular um, session, the, the uh, I don't know if it's a secret or what, but uh, for whatever reason, they decided to bury it into the token aspect. And if you click on the little token label you have, it will give you the address that the token was launched at. And this is the ERC-20 address that was minted when you created it. You guys may remember when we were doing XDAI and it was, it was sucking a lot of gas costs. That's because it was actually launching an entire smart contract and using kind of an already audited smart contract that's quite large but well known and, uh, and launching it to the network. So if you, if you go to client.aragon.org to recreate it on Rinkby, I think I put that in the notes, you can, you can generate that and then we can get your, your tokens here. And if you can get your, your company tokens and put the symbol and the contract address into the WhatsApp group, that would be great too. And I assume there's probably, I don't know, a dozen or so companies because we did it in groups, so not everybody's gonna have one. That wasn't me. <laughs> okay, so can you guys let's let's take a let's take a brief two minute break here. I've got this wonderful little timer to count down, and uh, it's a YouTube video for a two minute countdown timer. So if you guys can all find your addresses from the client Aragon and put them in the WhatsApp, and I can get this gentleman his tokens. Oh. Yes, please create a new organization on Rinkby. If you have, the only constraint is if you have XDAI, if you have enough, because I think I only sent like 75 cents to you guys, which is not enough to kind of do the next phase. So on Rinkby, I sent you 1.2 Rinkby ETH, which is the equivalent of, I guess I did the math wrong earlier, so <laughs> like two grand maybe? You have 0.8? Yeah. Well, so, so uh, you guys are going to be the liquidity provider for your token. So you can do that, but your token's going to be very cheap. Yeah, I can buy it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so does everybody have um, a company token that they created by any chance? Anybody? Gabrielle does. Oh, this guy does. All right. Quick, quick. Something? QCL. QCL. Did you post it in the WhatsApp group? Uh, Quick call. Yeah, your wallet. Yeah, yeah. But this, this, um, this token right here. So if you'll notice, the MIT Bitcoin Club whoops, has uh, an ERC20 token on the Rinkby network now that I happen to have created. And that is the address of the contract of the MIT Bitcoin Club's ERC20 Rink B token. <laughs> so uh, if, you, if you see, uh, it's actually on a previous page, but underneath here there's the name of the token and you just click on the name of the token. It should have a line under it. Post it on WhatsApp, but give us the, give us the token um, symbol that it is too, so we know it's a token. Thank you. Okay, so what you can do with that, all of you that have one, and I guess there's only two of you, <laughs> is you can take the token contract address and go to Rinkby uh, Etherscan. So Etherscan is like a web interface that allows you to dive into the details of the blockchain and look at transactions and look at um, a, lot of the, a lot of the activity that's happening. So this is the MIT Bitcoin ERC-20 contract um, on the Rinkby test, test network. Um, and let me actually just go live to that page so you guys can see what it looks like. Dun, 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 dun. Here it is. Okay, so here I've got uh, two holders of the 1,000 MIT BTC. 
I've got all the transfers that have happened, and then I've got the contract. And this is just a, a, a cool aspect of, of blockchain. It allows you to just kind of look at the contract directly on chain. It allows me to look at the actual source code. So this is a mini me token, which is a very old um, contract. I don't think it's been hacked, but if it has been hacked, it's been fixed. So that's why Aragon has been using it for years. Uh, and then you can do something that's pretty cool. At the lowest level, I can interact with the contract and I can read the contract. So anybody's allowed to read the contract, the name of it, the creation block, the total supply. Um, does anybody notice something wrong with this number? <laughs> uh, blockchain is all about cryptography, and cryptography runs on integer-based math. So if you ever want to have a floating point, you have to manage the numbers as an integer, two integers, uh, the number, and then how many decimals is it? So in the world of crypt cryptography, you're, or in the world of, of cryptocurrency, you're always going to find numbers that are just big, large integers, and then a second number that really just represents the decimals. So when you see here decimals 18, this token is using a standard of 18 decimals. So any number that you interact with the smart contract with is going to have 18 decimals after it. So I don't want you to go and think like, oh my gosh, I've got 10 to the 18th dollars for my tokens. This is fantastic. Um, which is a you know, common occurrence. And sometimes if you read about some of the mistakes that people make where they type in the wrong number and they realize, wait a minute, I didn't put in enough gas. I put one in and it was like, well, it's 10 to the minus 18th. <laughs> no, you need to. So anyways, I just wanted you to, to know that point. Um, so this is a low level interaction with the smart contract that is the ERC20 smart contract that is the MIT Bitcoin's ERC20 smart contract. I can also write to this contract directly if I know what I'm doing. Um, but in order to do that, I need to have authority. So I need to have a, a connect it with my wallet. So if I can connect with my wallet, I can approve and transfer and do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Wanted you to know that that is, a, that is an option to do it. 99.9% .9 of, well, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people just use DeFi from the user interface, and we've been using it from this, the um, Aragon user interface. Okay. So you can do that with your own token and just see, see what it looks like, and, and it's going to look exactly like the MIT Bitcoin token. Now, once you have the, the actual contract address, we can go to Uniswap. And if you go to app.uniswap.org, and you guys are going to be the liquidity providers for your own token. So if, you, if, we, if we put our business hats on and we say, OK, I've got a company, I've got a token, awesome. Now I've got to co convince people to be liquidity providers and provide a market for my token. Well, I've got an automatic market maker. I just need the capital to do that. Well, more than likely, you're going to be the one that's going to provide the initial capital for it. Um, so what you do is you set up, and if we go back to that initial example where there was 10 ETH and 500 OMG, they were actually setting a price, an initial trading price for that trading pair when they set that ratio. So you can do that right now by going to app.uniswap and click on the pool link, and it allows you to set this pair ETH, and I did an MIT BTC pair, and let me go do this live for you now so you can see how it looks. Oops. Let's see, here we go. Nope, wrong one, this one. Here we go, okay. So actually, let me just go back here and I'll start over again. I've got, uh, I've got a little bit of, of liquidity here. The thing that you need to understand about Uniswap is that they've launched on just about every single network. So even though when you pull this down, you don't see RinkB as an option, as long as you have MetaMask in your, you know, if, as long as you're, oh, sorry, as long as you're connected to RinkB on MetaMask. Did you get the RinkB? Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Um, it'll actually connect you with a Uniswap that is on RinkB. So you can use the same tools that you use on mainnet on a test network. So once you're here, I can now set up a new position. And so here's, here's the other tricky part. So now I have a whole bunch of tokens that I, I'm going to set up on a trading pair. So I'm sure the world knows about the MIT Bitcoin token that I just created a few hours ago, right? No, nobody knows about the MIT Bitcoin token. Not even you know, Uniswap, of course, because I just minted it. So what you have to do is, is actually paste the address here. Let me just pull it over here. I can just get this address here, and then I can pop it in over here. So then once I, once I put it in, it'll show up, and then well, I've, I've already done it on this app, but if you guys do it, it may show up and say, warning. 
this is an unknown token you're about to provide liquidity for, please do your own research, which is a, which is a nice thing for the Uniswap guys to say for us. Okay, now this, this complexity of the different fee tiers are something that happened with V3, but if we just pick 0.3 for simplicity's sake, we can set it up here. And I've already actually set this liquidity pool up. When you first do it, you're gonna have to decide what that ratio is between your tokens and ETH, and that's gonna define the initial K, and that's gonna define the initial price. So of course, stepping away from crypto and talking business, what should the first price of your, of your company's token be or your, or your token that you wanna trade is? That is a whole other source of, of other questions. What was that? No, I was just being serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a function of all of the you know, business parameters that go into it. I'm just going to, sh I'm showing you the mechanism of how to actually do it and how it actually happens and how it's traded. So if you think about what the value should be, that's, that is your opportunity to set that ratio initially. Now, uh, depending on how much capital you set initially, if you set it too small, if you have too small amount of capital when you initially launch, as soon as you set that first liquidity pool, it, is start, it starts to trade, it can trade, anyone can trade against it. Um, but you need to be very careful because if you set it too small and there's large trades, you can have huge things. So you, you really have to kind of think through how much capital can I deploy when I first launch to, in order to min, minimize the kind of crazy price Did fluctuations. Who saw the thing? Good question. Who's auditing what? value at this time with this amount of liquidity against what versus even the other pair, which is in our story. I love this question. This is a great question. Um, there are people that are auditing the smart contracts to make sure the smart contracts are doing the right thing, right? Right, but well, that's cool pretty much. But when I just created the MIT Bitcoin token, I just created it because it sounded like a good idea to create. So there's, there's no auditing of that. I just launched it out there and just for educational purposes only. No, no, right, in your case you're fine, but what about the, 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 the so-called major ones, the ones that have apparently a lot of liquidity? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's not gonna be in Uniswap, that's gonna be at that company's website, right? Okay. So, so if, if you wanna go dive into the billion dollar ones, they're gonna have audits of their books and everything else. Okay. So that, that, but that's a, a separate, separate yeah, transaction. <laughs> I'm just trying to talk about the mechanisms of how blockchain works here. That's why when I first started this class, I was talking about jumping over the edge, and this is exactly the edge that we're jumping over tonight, so. Okay, so we can add more liquidity to this liquidity pool right now. Even though I have a current price of 998 MIT BTC per ETH because I set that up when I first did it, so I can actually add some more, but because this is v V3, I have to set a price range that I want to provide the liquidity for, so let's go like 900 to, to let's say 1100. How does that sound? Or I can just do the full range. Let me just click on the full range and we'll just do the full range, and it, it's telling me that I'm not, I'm not smart about this. I understand, I understand, it's okay. So then I'll add one ETH of liquidity, but I don't have enough MIT BTC. Okay, so let me add 0 0.001. Okay, how does that look? I'm adding some more liquidity to the existing liquidity pool. So I can actually just go ahead and make that transaction, launch it into Uniswap on RinkB, and now I'm providing liquidity for this trading pair. Ta-da, well not yet, hold on, it's pending. Pending, 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 multi-call. <laughs> Yay. No cheering. <laughs> there we go. All right. So you guys can all do that now that you have an ERC-20 token with your company. You can actually list liquidity for it on Uniswap, but now Providing liquidity for your own token is only one part of it. Now you have to convince all your friends and your mother that, that she should buy your token, right? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, so the next step, of course, is to trade your token. So let's do that. So this is, it's the same, same page, except instead of being on pool, I want to be on swap. So if I want to buy, let's see, do I want to buy MIT BTC or do I want to sell it?
0.1. Do I have enough ETH to buy 0.1? Oh, geez, let's, let's buy 100. Oh, not 0.100, 100. How about 1,000? Oh, price impact warning. So the, the size of my liquidity pool is so small and the size of my trade is so large that it's telling me like, what are you doing, man? And I think there's ways to override that, but let's, let's, let's be nice to the MIT BTC liquidity pool here. No, nope, I don't have, there's not enough MIT BTC balance to make this trade. I only have nine, thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm trying to sell it. I'm trying to sell it, yeah, I want to do it the other way around. Let's try that. I don't know if there's enough MIT BTC to buy. Okay, let's, let's do the swap. Okay, now I'm buying, I'm buying MIT BTC for one rink B ETH. As far as you know, all this technology is working on this platform for beta assets. Yes. No, no like pounds, British pounds, US dollars. You know what I mean? It's working for uh, stable beta, coins. Okay, beta assets, beta assets, the maximum it will be a stable coin as far as worker. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the biggest, the biggest liquidity pool is for uh, DAI to USDC, which is two stable coins, two right. dollar stable coins, right, right, right. providing trading for those two pairs, okay. or that one pair. Like right now? In, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So if we go to, I'm going to have to wait for this. Uh, let's see. If I just. Even bigger than Fetter? Stable coin wise? Just by curiosity. Even bigger than Fetter? You know that Fetter. Uh, oh, uh, that are stable tether, coin, tether, tether, yeah, tether, yeah, tether yeah. and then like um, circle stable coin. Yeah, I'm not sure. Stable is. Coin. Does anybody know that's bigger than tether? No, that's the biggest. So here's here's Uniswap right now. You can just go to info.uniswap.org and see kind of what they're 1.12 trillion. I guess I was I guess I was off. What happened? Woohoo! I don't know. Are we on the rink B or are we on the real network? I guess we're on the real. <laughs> Something's happening. Do we know any breaking news that's going on? <laughs> and this, I, I took the average of the last, so you can see the volume over 24 hours. All right. Questions? Yes, sir. I have two questions, actually. So when I have to trade the liquidity on the end, the swap pad on Uniswap, but Gnosis is not a network option. Yes. So I cannot do it. So when then I try to create another organization on the WinkyB network, at uh, Aragon, but uh, yeah, for some reason, the, my Aragon web browser is connected to the uh, Gnosis hmm. network. If you change your MetaMask to be I the rink B, and then refresh, the yeah, account, yeah. It always asks me to switch back to the Gnosis because. Do you have another tab that's open that might be connected to something else? For rink B, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, any questions or should we pause here so you guys can all figure out how to trade your tokens? Does anybody have a token that they're trading right now? I know you're working on it vigorously. Do we have Quick Call? Is Quick Call currently being traded? Okay, all right, all right. Okay, cool. You, you sent the, uh, let's see. Let's check it out here. There it is. All right. Okay. So now I want to buy some of this QCL token. You, do you, have it, you don't have it listed in a, in a liquidity pool yet? Oh, I'm still trying to buy my MIT BTC. Yes. 
you'd set up a liquidity pool for your token. Yeah, right here under pool. I don't have any, if you sent me some of your tokens, I could set up a pool for you, but there's no way for me to get your tokens unless they're available for an ex on an exchange, right? right. Any other questions? I mean, I'm ready, I'm ready to buy all your tokens with my hot rink be ETH here that's about to expire on October 5th, so. As soon as you guys get a liquidity pool set up, that's fine. Let's go, let's go on, this, on this slide here. Okay, you ready? Two minute break. Okay, time's up. Does anybody have a token? How's your liquidity coming there, sir? Is that the uh, is that Aragon or is that Uniswap? Uh, oh, you need to just go to Uniswap now. You add liquidity, create a new position. So right here, when you're in Uniswap, you want to add liquidity to the to the pool. Sorry. There should be a, a pool icon up here. I'm showing you on the screen up here, right here. And then there should be a new position button on the right side. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes, excellent question. I'm going to repeat it, okay? So one, uh, we have one uh, company, and how many? You have 1,000 TRN, TRNK tokens just created, freshly minted tokens, and you want to set a liquidity pool with, what did you say? So 0.43 ETH and 50 TRNK is what you want to set as the liquidity pool. So that just defines the price in terms of relative terms. So, so I mean, it's 0.43 divided by 50 is the price of one versus the other, right? So, if you, so when you set that ratio initially, this is the sort of power of the liquidity pool when you first start it, you're actually defining that price point and you're defining the K for the curve. So, so whatever ratio you put in there, you're going to define that, that point, and then you're going to trade around that point. So that's the, that's the tricky part. That's why I wanted to do it on testnet, so you guys could just throw one out there, get some liquidity going, trade it, watch it blow up, and try it again. So. Is the ratio between the two okay, so one can be so like we set the ratio here, and then that ratio determines this. So like what's the difference between this and this? So okay, good question. So right here, well, right here, previously where you have, you're setting a price, you're, you're defining what that point is, and then here you're actually providing the tokens to provide liquidity. So you can actually set the price and then change the number of tokens that you want to provide in the actual liquidity pool. You don't have, they don't have to be the same thing. No, you're setting the price with that ratio, and then you, you just have to set the ratio in the left of the numbers that you want. So you could do 100 and 0.86, right, if you wanted to provide that much liquidity in the left. So, so right up here, you're setting the price, and then down here, you're providing liquidity. So this is you as the initiator of that liquidity pool, and then this is everybody else. So you'll notice now that I'm here, there's already a price been set, and I can, I can add some more to the liquidity pool, or I can remove some to that liquidity pool. Yes. Yes. Like in Bitcoin, it's a 21 million platform. Yeah, right, right. No, no, no. Not, I'm not setting the whole supply limit. That's that's on the that's when you're doing it on the Aragon app when you're minting the token. That's already been defined, and you can actually add more to it. This is just simply defining the price and the ratio between two tokens. The common challenge is that if you're just trading two tokens, the price is relative to each other. I never asked that question because it would create a 
but you know what I mean? the, world, the world operates with the dollar on the denominator, right? So everything is like, how much is that in dollar terms? How much is that in dollar terms? Right. right. Yes. Well, it, it, it's, it's actually baked into the, when you, when you have to set up a liquidity pool and you have to provide 50-50, that's actually denominated in dollar figures. That's, that's how they compare the two. Right. Historically speaking, then you can claim as a stable coins. But when you do digital asset to digital asset, like right now, it's a little bit what is a common denominator if it's her coin, like my coin right. versus her coin. Sort of. Well, there's a lot of a lot of when you're on the Ethereum network and the Ethereum token is the sort of gas token and is the basic token, that becomes the denominator. In fact, I've said a lot of times like you live in a world where the the y axis is defined by dollars and the x axis is defined by time. I really want to live in a world where the x-axis is defined by blocks, block number, yeah, yeah. and the y-axis is defined by ETH, right. <laughs> number of ETH. Not necessarily ETH per dollar, but everyone uh, thinks ETH per dollar, right? Because that, that's the video of the... Okay, she has a real question here. Go. <laughs> so when I go to transaction, it's showing like I'm spending the 4.43 ETH, not the 50... Uh, token? You're providing, you should be providing 0.43 ETH and the token into that. Oh, both? Yeah, should be. I'm ready to buy some of your hot tokens here. Gabrielle, you got a hot yeah, token for me? I do. All right. It's a, it's a competitive token with your MIT. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my club token. Oh, my. Is it the, it's not the Sloan Blockchain Club token? <laughs> You never know. You never know. Come and get it. All right, here we go. Let's, I'm going to buy this MIT Bitcoin Club token. All right, good, good, good. Let's go here. Let me swap. Oops, I'm still trying to buy some of that. What's taking so long here? What's wrong with it? Clearly, all right, forget it. Forget that one. Let me buy a... No, no, it was, it was already in. I had already done some transactions before. Maybe my... Maybe my uh, selling all my rinkby and throwing it out to everybody is, is trashing my MetaMask here. <laughs> all right. Who's fixing that? I don't know. Someone's been working on that. Look at that. MBC. I'm going to import this token. I'm sure it's completely legit. Unknown source, it says here. This token doesn't appear on any active lists. Gabrielle, what are you selling me? What's that? Look at this. <laughs> What is all this? MIT Bitcoin Club? Can I trust that? Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, I'm going to import it anyway. Why? Because I'm on the Rinkby test network and I really want some. So if I want to burn a full Rinkby ETH, how many MIT Bitcoins do I get? I have zero. So now as soon as I buy them, I should be able to provide liquidity with them, right? Yes. And then I'll rug pull. <laughs> right now, while I'm pending, <laughs> we're going to have a gas war on uh, Rinkby ETH. <laughs> All right. Dun, 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 dun. I got it. Oh, no, it's still indexing. I'm so nervous. I want my MIT Bitcoin token. I'm sure it's about to die, right? It's like last gasp. I, still, I have to burn up all these tokens before October 5th when they turn into pumpkins. That would be cool. They should turn into pandas. Is that my WhatsApp? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's something so Go uh, do the do not disturb right on the top right. Well, so so that that <sighs> <laughs> so now, do not disturb. Oh, you right. were on do not disturb. Oh, I was. Yeah, what are you doing? Maybe just mute the app. Mute the app. WhatsApp. Ooh, positive coin. Who's that? All right. Is there liquidity for it? 
Have you provided liquidity? All right, let's buy some positive coin. All right, now we're cooking here. All right. Okay, I want to buy some positive coin. There it is. Look at that. Import. This token doesn't appear on this. Okay. She's right there. How much do I get for one ETH? Oh, <laughs> stuff is expensive. <laughs> Ooh, I want to add it to MetaMask, too. I should do that so I can see how much. I forgot to add the MIT Bitcoin token. All right, what else? Does anybody else have a token? Do we have the trunk token? Yes, I have. Awesome. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. Test trink. How much do I get? Ooh, am I going to? Ooh, I'm going to kill your price here. If I only buy one? Can't make such a large purchase. There we go. Okay. I'll buy 10. I find that if it doesn't work, it's hammering it a thousand times, beats it into submission. <laughs> You've got a thousand, you want to send it to me and I'll set up a liquidity pool for you? Sure. You have my, my uh, ETH address? I'll post it in the WhatsApp. That is me. Yep. Send me your send me your quick call tokens. Although I haven't been able to get this swap off for my. All right, let's try it a little lower. Maybe it's too too much of an impact. Oops. Pretty impressive that Uniswap still works on the Rinkby network when the. Rinkby network is going away. All right, what time? Look at all the look at all these great MIT Bitcoin tokens I have. Okay, now you guys just have to work hard and add more value to your token, and then we'll be we'll be all set. All right. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, we're good. Yeah. All right. So, sort of going beyond this class, and I can stay afterwards, and we can mess around with with pooling and everything else. Um, if you want it. I wanted to explain to you guys Uniswap version one, so you kind of got a flavor for the first one. But if you go beyond that, there's a lot more sophisticated curves and a lot more interesting math and a ton of white papers you can dive into. Balancer and Curve are a couple of them. And then there's some aggregators like One Inch and Paraswap. So if you think about all of the chains that are out there and all of the Uniswap forks and all of the decks that are out there, there's a huge amount of opportunity to kind of to, to have a, a blast with various tokens. Okay, so congratulations guys, you made it to the end. Uh, some of you launched a token and traded a token and uh, I figured we could close out now and then we can mess around with your stuff. I don't need to, unless, unless we can wave to everybody on YouTube here. <laughs> and don't forget to try out hash chat. You don't even need any tokens to do that. <laughs> you can connect up gas free and do it. Are we good? Thank you. Good night.